a very good morning students we are in our regular class lecture and the subject is geotectonics and structural geology and in our today's class we will try to cover the headings the stages of rock deformation and the factors that controls the behavior of the rocks and for this two headings i had referred the book the structural geology by pillings so let us get into the heading the first one is the three stages of deformation that is if a body is subject to direct forces lasting over a short period of time say minute or hour it usually passes through three stages of deformation remember that there are some material this is called the brittle substance the 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 inter intermediate stages may be omitted in that type of uh, substance that is called the brittle substance at first what happens the deformation is elastic that is if the stress is withdrawal the body return to its original shape and size there is always a limiting stress called the elastic limit and if this is exceeded the body does not return to its original shape below this elastic limit the deformation obeys the hooke's law which states that the stress is proportional to strain so you can see a graph here which shows the relation between the strain and the stress that is the strain is taken in the x axis and the stress is taken in the y axis if the stress increases you can see in the same way the strain also increases and that is up to a limit and this is called the elastic limit and you can see here that is stress is proportional to strain that is when the value of stress increases in the same way the strain also increases and that is why we are getting a slanting line that is approximately 45 degree so the deformation from this point up to this point is called as the elastic deformation as if the stress is removed back the formation or the rock will retain to its original shape and this is proposed by the hooke's law and if you cross this limit that is the elastic limit what happens there will be a deformation called the plastic deformation that is the specimen only partially returned to its original shape even if the stress is removed the steel rod under tension for example begin to get thinner or neck in the middle and even if after the stress is released the continuous remain in the rod in the rod so what you are saying is if the stress increases further crossing the elastic limit the deformation will be considered as the ductile deformation or the plastic deformation and they are given example as a iron rod if you are heating up and if it extends and if even the stress is removed the iron rod will retain the shape right so that is an example of plastic deformation and if further the stress is applied at some point the rock will break that is fracture will appear and that is called rupture type of deformation so these are the three stages of rock deformation the first one is the elastic deformation where the rock will retain to its original shape and size the second one is the plastic deformation where the rock will not come back completely but the rock will not also break that is called the plastic deformation the third one is the ruptural type of deformation when the rock actually breaks so the brittle substance that i mentioned earlier that is the brittle substance are those that rupture before any significant plastic deformation takes place that is if the stress is applied there will be only rupture type of deformation and such a substance are called as brittle substance and there are also some substance called ductile substance those undergoes a large plastic deformation before rupture after elastic limit has been exceeded ductile substance undergo a long interval of plastic deformation so if a substance say goes for a long in stress as a plastic deformation then it is called as a ductile substance that we had already seen in the earlier paragraph so why we are concerned with this type of deformations right that is we are going to see the elastic deformation is primarily of importance in analyzing tidal deformation of the solid earth and in the in investigating the term transmission of seismic waves through the earth so to understand the tidal deformation on the earth crust as well as the transmission of seismic waves we should understand the elastic type of deformation it is of even more direct significance of structural geology in studying the elastic rebound associated with the earthquake in the fracture of rock to produce joints falls and in certain aspect of folding although most structural features observed by the structural geologist are of result of the deformation beyond the elastic limit 
the same parameter of length, mass, time and forces are involved. So we are also interested in elastic deformation. As you know the elastic deformation, after the deformation takes place, the rock will return to its original shape and size and there will be no any structural aspect or uh, appearance after the removal of the stress. But we are still interested in elastic deformation as the length, mass, time and force involved are actually same as that in the plastic deformation. The plastic deformation although most rock at room temperature and pressure failed by rupture before attaining a stage of uh, plastic deformation. Most rocks at sufficient high temperature and confining pressure deforms plastically. Even in experiment lasting for a short time, this plastic deformation is not recoverable or if only partially recoverable. And that is if the stress is removed, the material does not return to its original shape. In much experiment work, the deformation of rock results from internal adjustment within the mineral grain, notably gliding and dislocations. So the plastic deformation is also interesting because at surface level the deformation are mostly of rupture type. But when the rock is under confining pressure that is under a deep in the surface, the rock may behave, behave differently. And in our next heading that we are going to see what are the factors that controls the behavior of the rock. So the first factor is the confining pressure. So the mechanical behavior of the rock is controlled not only by their inherent property that is if the, the properties that are born with the rock right like mineralogy, grain size, porosity, fracture etc. So these are some of the factors that controls the rock behavior but there are also some other factors that is not in the limit of this uh, inherent properties like uh, there are some other properties like confining pressure, temperature, time, solution, all such a thing which is not related to its origin. So these are the overall factors that controls the behavior of the rocks. So we will see one after the other. The first one is the confining pressure. The cylinder of uh, rock or prepared for the experiment. Usually the length is several times the diameter that is it is a cylinder in shape. The graph shows the different behavior of the same sample at defined confining pressure. So look at the graph, you can see in the x-axis they are mentioned as a strain and in the y-axis they are mentioned as stress. As the stress increases, all the graph lines is for a same sample but the only difference is the confining pressure. You can see here the confining pressure is say at 1 kilogram per centimeter square. The rock breaks at 3000 um, kilogram per square centimeter stress itself, right? But the same rock at a confining pressure of say 4000 kg per centimeter square will withstand up to a limit of say 8000 kg per square centimeter, right? So all the graph indicates one thing that the same rock behaves differently according to the confining pressure. So as the confining pressure increases, what we can see is the strength of the rock is also increasing. The rock that breaks at a very less confining pressure at very less stress, the same rock can withstand a very high stress at very high confining pressure. So this is the relation between the confining pressure and the rock behavior. And the next one is the temperature. The change in temperature modifies the strength of the rock. For example, the hot steel undergoes a plastic deformation much more readily than does the cold steel. So they are shown in the figure. The figure shows the test run for a Yule marble. That is a marble that is uh, of a Yule that appears in the rule. The conditions were identical except the temperature. So you can see the graph where the conditions are other. All the conditions are ideal. That is the confining pressure or whatever it is all are ideal. But the only difference is the temperature that you can see here. The same rock that breaks that behaves uh, as elastic up to this level at room temperature and breaks at almost 6000 kg per centimeter square. And if the rock is hot without any moisture, the, behave, the strength has decreased so, to this level. And if the rock is hot and it consisting of a moisture, then it is uh, say further decreased with the strength, right? So this is how the temperature controls the behavior of the rocks. 
so we can simply say the temperature is inversely proportional to the strength of the rock right as the temperature increases the strength may decrease so next one is the time so what is the control of time over the rock behavior actually the geological process have great length of time in which to operate actually although geological time is impossible to duplicate experimentally it is possible from experiments to make some deduction concerning the influence of time analysis of an effect of time is concerned with such a subject of creep strain rate and viscosity the creep refers to the slow continuous deformation with passage of time so here is a graph that shows there is only a uh, stress applied for one time but after time takes what happens to the rock specimen that is what they are shown here so you can see in the y axis there is a strain and in x axis they kept as time actually the stress once appeared uh, once applied uh, was kept as it is so what happened they are mentioned here at the end of one day probably this is the end of one day what happens it has been shortened about 0.06006 percentage and after 10 days what happens the shortening is increased by 0.011 percentage and after 100 days it is like 0.016 percentage and after 400 days a little more than 0.019 percentage the general form of creep curve is shown in figure that is as the time goes the deformation also increases without an addition of stress so this is what explained in this so we can conclude that the fundamental strength of any material is defined as the stress which that material is able to withstand regardless of time under given physical condition like temperature pressure solution without rupturing or deforming continuously the fundamental strength which is always less than the breaking strength and ultimate strength is much more significant to the geologist unfortunately at the present time we have few data on the valuable value of the fundamental strength of the rock so from this we can simply conclude that the time as the time period increases the deformation also increases that is the strength of the rock may decrease so the third next heading is the solution uh, much rock deformation takes place while solution capable of reacting chemically with the rock or present in the pore spaces and this is noticeably true for metamorphic rocks in which extensive or complete recrystallization occurs the solution dissolves old material and precipitate new one under such condition the mechanical properties of rock generally modify so you can see here the y axis is shortening of the rock specimen and in x axis there is only time but if the rock sample which is dry that breaks uh, that may not uh, change much with time right but if the rock sample consisting of water you can see the change is like with time at a different time interval you can see the change it is actually moving it is actually shortening much more as time passes on and if there is a presence of uh, say reacting solution like uh, dilute hydrochloric acid the reaction is even much more faster so the deformation is dependent on the solution if the sample that is a uh, rock specimen is dry they may not uh, much deform with time and if the specimen consisting of water the deformation is quite higher and if the solution is consisting of uh, reacting solutions like a dilute hydrochloric acid the rock behave much faster that is uh, the mod, uh, rock deforms even shorter interval of time and the next heading is the anisotropism and inhomogeneity actually most of the tests described in the previous section were made on isotropic material that is the rock whose mechanical property were uniform in all direction rocks that shows bedding banding or foliation are not isotropic actually they are anisotropic right the strength of such rock would depend upon the orientation of the applied force to the planar structure of the rock this point is well illustrated in the figure that you can see here in the left side the rock was a yule marble the same rock that we had seen here the confining pressure was say 100 
1000 kg per centimeter and the test were run at room temperature all the specimen shows a great plastic deformation so you can he see here the solid line represents the compression and the dotted line represents the extension you can see the solid line and dotted line react totally in a different way so in the solid line you can see the cylinder is perpendicular to the foliation here and in this case the cylinder is parallel to the foliation so if you are compressing and the compression is uh, say parallel to the foliation the rock will be quite weaker and if the compression takes place perpendicular to the foliation the rock may behave a little bit stronger right in the same case of extension what happens if the extension takes place perpendicular to the foliation the rock will be quite weaker and if the extension takes place parallel to the foliation then the rock will be compared as a bit stronger right so this is how the orientation of the weaker plane and the direction of stress and the resultant graph so we conclude that it is clear that the mechanical properties of rock are profoundly modified by confining pressure temperature the time factor and the presence of reacting solutions increase in confining pressure increases the elastic limit and the ultimate strength increase in temperature weakens the rock after long continuous stress the rock become much weaker so the combination effect of these factor is so great that it is impossible in a present state of our knowledge to treat rock deformation in a quantitative way so what we are doing is just a quantitative studies if you are interested to do a quantitative studies then we have to do a detailed research on these things to get a clear idea about that with this i am concluding this class and if you have still any doubt we can just discuss in the class thank you have a great day